So this is a short talk on the International Business Degree Programme at Hertfordshire. And then we have three students who will give you their experiences um, of coming in as international students and how they found adapting to studying in the UK and some of the, the modules and, uh, and the opportunities that the university and the degree offer. So the International Business Degree Program is really flexible. It allows students to come either on a three or four year program, though in terms of your CAS, students that are accepted are, are, are issued with a four year CAS so that you can make your choices um, as you go through the degree program. As part of the International Business Degree Program, you have to study a minimum of one semester abroad. Um, so students, if you want to finish in three years, you would need to study at least one semester in year two abroad and then come back for your final year with us. And I'll go through all the different routes on the program in a couple of slides. If you're on the four year route, you can have you have the opportunity to to secure a work placement, perhaps in the UK or even going back to your home country. If, if you go back to your home country, it has to be in an international role, or you can carry on studying abroad uh, on that four-year route. The key thing to note at this point is that in, if you are on the four-year route, you're still only paying three years of tuition fees because that year three, the study abroad slash placement year is fee free. You have the possibility, if you start on year one of the degree program, to do dual awards. And these are with some of our TAPSA partners. We are in an alliance of a European, a, a transatlantic alliance, which has four universities in Europe and four in the US. And we're working on developing dual awards with all of our US partners, though we have some dual awards with European partners at the moment. And I'll show you that on the route as well. There's another option to get a second degree on the four year route by, by going to Berlin or Paris and following a fixed uh, program of study and then coming back for your final year to us and doing some fixed modules as well. We, it's not compulsory, but we encourage students to study a language and some do and some don't. Um, as that can also help with employability and depending on what you want to do after you graduate. This degree program is EFMD accredited. We're one of only about 10 or uh, 12 universities in the UK that have this accreditation. And we recently went through a successful reaccreditation in March uh, for, and were granted this for another five years. There are some entry requirements, of course. Uh, and you need to have done your ITILs and scored, but all of this um, is on the website to give you information about that. So let's just talk about ooh, the degree program and what it offers. Uh, as I've, I've already gone through all of this, uh, but, but with the opportunity to study abroad and many students opt to study abroad for up to two years on the four year program, you really get to embed yourself in different cultures, you can also do work, ex uh, work uh, experience and have a uh, placement uh, in the UK, abroad. And, and through this, you really develop your resilience, your multicultural uh, appreciation. And therefore, in terms of employability, it really has a positive impact on employability for students that have studied on international business. So here are the different options on this. I'm not going to spend too long. Hopefully I'll be able to put these slides um, into the chat or it can be emailed to all, all of the people that were invited today and also the international business brochure um, that I, I will pass on to my colleagues in the international office to pass on to all people who were invited. But in its simplest term, if you want to finish in three years, you can providing you study abroad in year two on this degree program. Then we have two four-year options. And again, in, e in these four-year options, in the middle column, you'll see that you can study either at Hertfordshire for year two, or you can opt to study abroad uh, somewhere in year two. So Vaishnavi, who's on this call, has just finished year one, and I'll ask her to talk about um, her experiences in a little while, and she's hoping to go to America to the University of Oklahoma for year two and then 
I'm not sure if she wants to do the three year or four year route, she will decide at the end of next year. So you can study abroad in year two. The key thing when you're studying abroad in year two is you have to match the curriculum to what students who stay at Hertfordshire would be studying broadly. So the main subjects that our students do here, we would need to find matching students uh, modules abroad. And when students go away in year two, they go to places like US, there are lots of European partners, Australia, um, also Singapore, Malaysia, there, there are a vast array of university partners for you to choose from. And then year three, you can either keep studying abroad and hop to another country, or you can combine that with a placement or do a whole year's work placement if you've studied abroad in year two. And then in, on all these pathways, everybody finishes their final year in Hertfordshire. So year one's always in Hertfordshire and the final year's always in Hertfordshire. And then I talked about these dual degrees we have with this alliance we're part of. We currently have um, dual degree options in Valencia, which is in Spain, but you would need to study Spanish for that. Uh, in Kedge, which is in Marseille, and you would need to do French with that, and Bremen in Germany. And German language uh, is preferable as something you're studying alongside. And we currently have a dual degree with North Carolina, USA. Now, for, although we have uh, three other partners that we're building uh, dual degrees with at the moment in the America, currently we only have one, but we hope that the other three will be up and running uh, by 2024. So if you were to join this year, you could have the opportunity of those other opportunities. And they are in Hofstra University, which is based in New York, in North um, Florida University, in Jacksonville, in Florida, and hopefully in Weber State University, which is in Utah. And in those degrees, you spend two years abroad at the same partner that combines all the American requirements and our core modules for year two, as well as an internship or alternative modules as well. Depending on the partner, this will vary based on what their requirements are. In terms of subjects, I'm not going to spend very long on this, but you, you'll see, uh, broadly speaking, that you cover in year one quite a, a, a breadth of different business areas. So you'll do an economics module, you cover marketing, you'll cover HR or human resource management, uh, and then you do a data module and, uh, and so on, accounting module. You have the choice to either start a language and all five languages that we offer, which I'll talk about in a minute, can be started at beginner level. Or if you already have some language skills, you can start at different levels for some languages. And if you don't want to do a language, we have alternate business modules there for you. In year two as well, you'll see that there are different core modules that we studied, the ones in the different shades of blue here. So these are compulsory modules for all students. And again, we cover a range of different subject areas, everything global um, and international to develop your cross-cultural skills, if you like. This year, in year two, we also had a virtual exchange. So if you stayed in the UK for year two, uh, you um, worked with students in Germany to do part of an assignment. That's not going to take place next year. We're looking for another opportunity on, another, on, a, on a module as needed. And you can see you have different optional modules if you don't study a language. Now, when it comes to final year, because students have been and studied abroad um, and done all these, ha had all these interesting experiences, we have less core modules, but then we have a range of different semester um, optional modules you can choose. So if you're interested in finance, for example, there will be a finance module in both semesters. If you're interested in data, there are data modules, HR modules, marketing modules, and so on. Now, some of these um, options for um, final year can change by the time you reach final year because there's always little movements or there may be new things that come on board and we take something out. So just bear in mind, it may not look exactly the same 
for you when you come to final year. We also take direct entrance at year two, though all of you have applied for year one. So I'm going to skip this. But Sufian, who joined us in year two, this academic year, will talk to you about his experiences on that. In terms of languages, again, it's highly recommended, but it's optional. It's not compulsory to study a language. Historically, language studies were compulsory in year one of the degree. And we offer five languages. Uh, and they're all languages can be taken at beginner level. So you don't need to have any language skills in it. And if I remember right, uh, Anne Maria, who's on this call, is studying a language uh, from a beginner level, but she can talk about that in a minute. And then if you have language skills, different uh, languages are offered at different levels. We are also looking to offer from um, 24 onwards, a couple of other languages, which would be uh, Brazilian, Portuguese, and Korean, but that's in the pipeline and not been confirmed yet. So what's studying abroad? So we have a lot of study abroad partners all across the world. You'll see in all different countries, we have a lot of different partners. And so you can explore and travel. As I said already, when you go away in year two, you have to match the curriculum. So you may not, for example, be able to go to all of these countries because they may not have partners where it's taught in English and they have broadly speaking, similar modules to what students would study here. In year three, however, if you're on the, on the four year route, when you study abroad, you can choose any business and other modules of interest to you. So there's nothing you're mapping to. So that gives you an advantage of doing something you're interested in and may not have had an opportunity to do. A lot of our students historically have done placements abroad. And here are some examples of the types of countries and the types of placements um, students do. We have a partnership with Disney that has just reopened this year. And we have students that go to America and do a Disney placement where you work in different roles and study a bit uh, and get some qualification that Disney has as part of that in, uh, placement. I know Sufian has been looking to get a placement for year three in the UK and he can briefly um, tell you what his plans are for next year in a few minutes. I'll send this PowerPoint to be sent to everybody, but this just will give you, I've just added some quotes from students of how doing international business impacted them uh, and the impact it's had on them during the degree and post the degree in terms of employability. One thing to just mention at this point is that you have to study abroad, I've said, for a minimum of one semester to stay on international business. If for some reason your personal circumstances change and you can't study abroad for some reason, there is a, a route. What we can do is transfer you out at the end of year two into business administration. But it means you can't get an international business degree. And this is possible for international students as well, but you would end up with a business administration degree if you don't study abroad. And we would facilitate transferring you to that course um, for your final year. Again, not going to go through these, but these are some alumni spotlights. So students that have finished with us and what they're doing now and how uh, the impact that this degree has had on them. So finally, before I uh, hand over to the students, is there's a lot of research that's been done, and there's more recent research as well, post the pandemic now, that talks about the impact that study abroad can have on students. It really improves both academic achievement at the end of your degree, as well as employ employment outcomes. What we find is that students having studied abroad, and it's coming back to that point now where about 30 to 40% of our students will spend two years abroad on the, and do the four year route. Um, and that was the case before the pandemic as well. 
it, students who come back, they come back so focused, they've had all these life experiences that have really helped them to develop where they want to be uh, post-graduation. And we find that most of our students will get what we call good degrees, which are first uh, or uh, upper second class. And employment-wise, we find students get really good graduate roles, they progress fast, uh, and, and have lots of good prospects. A lot of that gained due to the experiences that they have developed during their degree studies. So in terms of fees and finance, I've put a link here to the current scholarships. There are other things available, but as I said already, you would end up paying three years of international tuition fees. Uh, the, if you, even if you do the four-year route, there's no tuition fees. Of course, you will need money to go to and study abroad or to, for your living costs. There is a Turing scheme, uh, we, which is funding for student mobility. And what that means is that there's a possibility that you could get some funding from this, which is a grant. You don't have to pay it back. Um, while you are studying abroad or working abroad, as long as it's for over four weeks. This is not a guarantee. Uh, it depends on what funding is allocated to the university for the year. And they start by focusing on any students from disadvantaged backgrounds and funding them. And then if funds are available, fund everybody else. There are also some scholarships based on academic, um, academic achievement that are given to students to support study abroad. In terms of how we support our students, you have a program leader. At the moment, I am the program leader for international business. My colleague Elizabeth's also on this call, and she is uh, the deputy program leader, though for the next six months, she's going to be the acting program leader while I take on uh, another role and then I'll be back to program leading in December anyway. So Elizabeth's on the call there as well and you can see her now. Um, you have obviously a place, we have a contact with us, we use WhatsApp groups with our students. You have, if you're doing a placement, we have a placements team that approves your placement. We have a study abroad team that works with you on study abroad. And then when you go and study abroad, all our partner institutions would also have study abroad offices um, who will support you with day-to-day -day matters that you have there. So there's a lot of support. Uh, and these are our details. I've just left it because nothing is official as the way our roles are, but you could contact either of us in order to get more information or to ask any questions that you might have. So that's me done in terms of my presentation. Um, I think I'd ask, um, let's start with uh, Sufayan as a direct entrant to uh, year two. Just introduce yourself and tell us where you came from and perhaps just take a minute or two to explain to us how you found uh, transferring from Pakistan to the UK, um, how you found the education system, the support, and what your plans are for next year and so on. It'd be interesting for prospective students to hear your views. So I'll hand over to you, Sophia. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I am Muhammad Sufyan Raja. Uh, I'm from Pakistan. And I've started directly year two in University of Hertfordshire which was, I think, the best decision of my life. Uh, well, I started this degree uh, back home in Pakistan, then I realized that I need to get something internationally. So when I came here, um, I will start, uh, I, I will try to explain you in three different uh, uh, points. Uh, the first is academically, the second is extracurricular and settling in UK. And the third, third is how is, uh, international business is grooming my personality or my interpersonal skills or communication. So while I, I will start with the academically, as Natasha um, told, uh, you know, there is so many support in terms of academics. Uh, uh, there is uh, you, like, for example, when I came here, English was not my first language. So there are some uh, modules which helps me 
to in, enhance my skills uh, you know in, in academically and there is one another support is case which helps me uh, with all my readings and you know assessments and uh, with all these things there is career and employment uh, there is there is career facility as well as she she said uh, i'm going to take my placement um i think it's been one year and uh, um, my program leader and my module leaders are helping me in any any case where i'm stuck or where i where i i, I feel like i need help so yes university of atmosphere is uh, having a world class facilities which helps student to enhance his uh, interpersonal skills and other other uh, academical skills as well um i'm going to i'm going to tell you about the extracurricular and uh, setting in uk because i was just an, a new international student i don't i didn't know what to do how to do but when i came into university i interact with the <clears throat> lo- you know the societies we have we have cultural societies we have uh, sustainable societies so i joined one of the uh, one of the my pakistani society and one is which is called enactus i think which is which is every which is i think every student should have to uh, join the enactus because it may it, it gives you the skills to be uh, 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 um, you know it gives you the entrepreneur skills and you can you can learn there how to speak in the in the big community and this stuff and how the the question is, every student ask how to settle in the uk as uh, you all know that we are living in the technological world we, we have everything on internet so the the first thing you have to do you you make sure you are doing your research whatever you want to do whatever you thinking so do your research and then in uk the best thing is you have different apps you can find everything on you know your mobile phone you don't need to uh, you don't need to uh, worry for anything uh my experience settling in uk was very good and i am i'm still learning things uh and the last thing i will i, I want to mention is self grooming last year this time i had so many questions in my life what to do how to do i was stuck so but uh like during my and uh, i especially thanks to natasha she really helped me with all those things and uh, the the best thing about what i like university of atmosphere uh, they helped me to have myself a uh, personal tutor and self mentor as well which is sam and i think th- he is helping me wherever i'm i'm stuck and where i feel like you know i have to uh, i have confusion in 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 other things so um, um, after all these things i think after 9 months i i am working i'm still working on myself and i have uh, i enhance my interpersonal skill which is i'm scheduling my week i'm scheduling my month because these all things came from you know studying just uh, in hard for shy and all those things and with with all these things i de- i developed communicational skills because i was a very shy in, uh, introvert personality uh after after studying some modules where i interact with the other culture other diverse people from other part of the world i th- i believe it helped me to to in, in improve my communication skills so i can communicate with all those students i don't mind uh, is he from pakistan or is he from urdu speaking or is he from english speaking or is from french speaking so this is these are the uh, uh, these are the very basic things i i mentioned because every international student is is worried when it came in the diverse community so all like me i was very shy i didn't you know interfere in the in the in the chats in the conversation in the in the session so i i feel like you know after one year i i am capable to um to speak to anyone that was the biggest uh, you know the, the the closure of my uh, you know communication and uh, the plan of year 3 is uh, i was i am looking for a placement and i, I am already in contact with one company and i believe that i'm going uh, i passed my interviews that's that's the very best thing so just you know as natasha said uh, there is a placement team which approves your uh, placement so the next step is to approve 
I will I will send all my details to them and they will approve uh, my placement. So then I will continue with my uh, the plan and the <clears throat> the main plan is I will uh, do internship for six months and for the next six months for the next semester I am planning to go for study abroad, uh, which is the very I think this is the best. Uh, this is the beauty of international business, where you where you study two year, year one and year two in Hertfordshire, and for year three, you can go either uh, study abroad or you can do work placement. So you'll get like you have option. So which option you want to achieve to make yourself capable for the for when you graduate? So you you it basically uh, improve your CV as I have experienced. That you know when I when I applied for the placement, so they had proper interview and the induction. Where are you? Like which university are you from? Which facility they have? How you? How, how was your first year? Which support did you get? So I I had all these answers. So um I'm I'm very grateful that I've joined um Hertfordshire and especially uh. Natasha is our program leader, so oh, I'm very happy for that. Thank you. So, and you're planning to go and study abroad in the US, right? Yeah, That's US. That's the current yes. plan for semester yeah. B. So, uh, hopefully yes. that gives you. Thank you very much, uh, Mohammed Sofian yes. Raja, for that. Uh, it's great to have you on board, and we love having you as a student with us. Yes. And it's amazing, actually, your transformation from yes. September to now is exactly. really amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, because uh, I've spoken to you a lot uh, in that time, and it, yeah. the confidence you've built, the yeah. the friendships you've made have been yeah. really, really great. And you also work part time, which many yeah. students may have to. And the yeah. balance and the grades you've achieved have been fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you um, very. Much. Thank you for that. Should we carry on with the next student? Um, can I ask Vaishnavi? Are you happy to have a quick, um, give us a quick, I know you had some issues with your BRP and a very yeah. stressful start to the academic year, but it got resolved with, it was just eventually, but it was quite stressful for you. So if you can introduce yourself and obviously you had some stresses with the BRP, but it got resolved. Uh, and just tell us a little bit about how you've adapted and what your plans are for next year and how you found Hertfordshire this year, please. Like, hello guys, very good morning. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, myself, Vaishnavi Maisurya, and I'm from India. I came last year um, in a September intake. To be honest, uh, it was a memorable year of my life because we I met like lots of people from the different country, like, uh, we met like the uh, stranger and now we are like family. I feel like Hertfordshire is my home because um, we do assignments together. We do everything together. We, we spend lots of time together. Like I don't, I don't feel like I'm alone here. And uh, I'm very thankful to Natasha ma'am and our student immigration team who being very supportive to me. Because when I came here, because of my um, agent mistake, my BRP card was like reached to another university. And um, at that moment, I'm very like stressful. I, mm -hmm. I feel depressed. So I talked to Natasha, ma'am, like I'm very depressed. Then she tell me like, um, I, I, you are not alone. We are with you. And at that moment, like, Natasha ma'am emailed every single day to immigration team about my incident. And because of Natasha ma'am, I got my BRP card after one month. And I don't know if Natasha ma'am not there, what, what should I do? What, no, no, how I handle the no, situation? No. <laughs> I don't know how, how I do uh, like this thing. Yeah, it's and... not just me. I think the program leadership team here generally will help you with all of it. Yeah. Yeah, everything, everything. Like they are very being supportive. And um, uh, uh, talking about my uh, next year. So tomorrow is my visa interview. Hopefully, I get <laughs> the visa. <laughs> I'm going to University of Oklahoma. Uh, I want to spend my two years there. And um, 
if i if i don't get this opportunity if i i i'm not the student of the university of hertfordshire so very thankful to university of hertfordshire our our uh, module leaders our student immigration team our international business team study abroad team very thankful to like build this type of uh, course and like this type of everything like me uh, may we all have a fruitful and un unforgettable journey at the university of hertfordshire yeah. and thank you so much for having me here natasha ma'am our international team thank you thank you so much thank you thank you for coming and speaking to us vaishnavi thank in you in terms of adapting can i just ask you a question in terms of adapting to studying here and the way we teach and the way you're assessed how did you find that adapt uh, uh, to adapt um, to be honest like english is not my uh, first language so i i talked uh, like i take a uh, classes of case i talked to a uh, uh, our module i like professors uh, where i i am stuck i go to them i i tell them my problem why like i am stuck here this is my problem so they will like they are like my friend they tell me everything like you do that you do that they giving me the tips how you score more and if if not understand at, at that moment they are uh, telling me but i am not understanding mm -hmm. but i tell them once again then i then um, i talk to my friend and and maria was my like best friend in here mm -hmm. so we are like always together we talk everything and so, with you so that's good so both yeah. students so far have mentioned case case yeah. stands for the center of academic skills enhancement and it's a the business school has its own team uh, of colleagues who support students with academic skills writing skills referencing feedback presentations and everything else thank you vaishnavi that's great thank you yeah, thank you so and much. maria last but not least can i ask you to introduce yourself and tell us the same things give us a bit of background about your, your journey and how you found it here and of course you were very brave on the first day because you volunteered to be a student rep as well so you've <laughs> taken on additional responsibilities so tell us about your journey okay hi guys uh, my name is Anne Maria Jort and I'm from uh, India uh, and I've just started on this September 20 2021 sorry 2022 <laughs> uh, I always forgot the date <laughs> exactly okay so to be fair, it's a big decision that you go to UK and your parents have to be with, there with you. Like the parents compel, you have to compel your parents to push you to go there. That's a big thing. And uh, when I went to, uh, when I went, came to UK, I was a bit nervous. I was scared because um, you, I'm the only, I mean, I have no one. Like I had no relatives, no, no friends or anyone like that. So everything was new. And as I was, uh, I came to, uh, I mean, the first day I came was to collect my BRP in university and I saw the university, you know, university was beautiful, extraordinary. Uh, and I think, uh, yeah, so the first thing, so when we, before we started the courses and everything, like we had an onboarding week, I think at that time, uh, Natasha ma'am gave us like a uh, big thing to do a presentation with strangers. So it was like a bonding week. And at the very end of the week, we had to do a presentation on sustainability. I do remember that. <laughs> and uh, everyone like everyone was a bit scared. Like everyone was like having a bit, uh, you know, there was a bit tough to get the bonding in. But I think that's a great start to begin with because because of that, I had many more, I had to be with them for like other presentations also. So it is like the first bonding that we get in the university itself. And the second thing is like, I think the studies, to be fair, in India, the studies is completely different from here. So you have essays, you have group assay, group presentations, and you're completely in middle of nowhere. And uh, I think case is like one of the best things that helps you in doing like hardware referencing uh, and, you know, getting the, uh, doing the essays and stuff like that. Uh, so, the first year I was a bit down and the masters also was like that because I was new. I had to get like, the essays going on, the 
group presentation. I had part time job also on the other side. So all together managing. Then I gave up myself to present for the uh, rep 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 also. So that was another big thing. Then um. I think along the way it just went forward, and the first year the marks were a little bit low, but the second year is like second. Sorry, the second sem is like you know improving sem. You're getting on the track. You're getting to know everything. Yeah, that's really important. That yes, it does take a little while to settle, and uh, don't be disheartened if your marks are different because over here in the UK to get a mark of seventy or above is seen as excellent. Whereas maybe from countries you're coming from, you need to get 90 and above to get excellent. So that you need yeah. to appreciate the system we have here. Uh, um, and then obviously it is, y'all are so brave and courageous to come internationally and to adapt and to perform well. Um, you know, it takes a little while to settle in. So don't be disheartened. There is support that you need to take on board and we direct you to all of this support. But then in the second semester, as you said, you can you really appreciate you've had some marks, you understand better what the expectations yeah. are uh, and, and then can really push forward to get better marks uh, going mm -hmm. forward. Now, year one doesn't count towards your degree classification. It counts if you want to study abroad and where you get offered a space. But obviously, you should use it to make sure you're developing good practices and good um understanding of what our expectations are. So how did you find being a student rep? Let me ask you before we. Experience, like I have been a captain while back in my school days. So doing this, it was like a complete same thing, but it was a bit different because you, it's a larger community. You are you are managing like a group of big people also. And uh, you have to, you know, always connect with the people to know what's happening, uh, if there's any problem with them, or uh, and you have to connect with the module leaders and the people uh, to let them know what the problems are. Yeah. So we had a couple of meetings also, uh, student prep meetings. Then we had like council meeting rooms also on every on every sem, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or every sem, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And you plan to study abroad in year three. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I've taken French language. So French is a bit tough, but yeah, I'm studying. <laughs> That's good. Uh, so, and you're going to yeah. carry on your French next year. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to carry on because even though it's hard, but to be fair, like where I'm working right now, it's a bit uh, international space. Uh, I'm working in making of Harry Potter studio. Okay. So I'm doing it beginning. Uh, so I'm a retail assistant over there so basically it's like more mostly foreigners there's french people coming in and you're like how are you okay and they're like oh, so it's okay you can you know, practice you're, you're, your french a little yeah, bit and then nice, maybe then you go yeah. to france in year three maybe you'll look at the maybe. double degree maybe yeah we maybe talk about that next year yes. okay thank yes. you so much Anne maria yeah. um are there any other questions I'll stop the recording perhaps.